Hi, I'm Dan with Family Home Theater, and I just got a new AV receiver, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to update my video on AV receivers to let you know what you should be looking for in something like this in 2022, 2023, and then I'm sure technology will change again. But if you're looking for a new AV receiver, well, this is the right place. So AV receiver is going to have a whole bunch of different technologies on the box. For example, this one has an entire lid worth of technologies that it talks about. Now, not all of these are going to matter to you. There are going to be some that uh, you are going to want, depending on your theater and depending on your situation. Uh, for example, uh, Josh technology. I have no idea what that is, but if you need it, I guess it has it. But the important ones. Go on to the top few rows here. Dolby Atmos. What Dolby Atmos is, along with DTSX, those are your newest sound technologies for th if you have a theater that has the ceiling mounted speakers. So if you want to have speakers in your ceiling or mount speakers onto your ceiling, then you want to make sure that your new AVR has the Dolby Atmos or DTSX. If you don't want speakers in your ceiling, then you just have to make sure that your receiver will do Dolby 2 HD and DTS HD Master Audio. Now, this one doesn't specifically mention those, but if it does Dolby Atmos, then it's also going to do Dolby 2 HD just fine. Now, also important, especially in 2022, is that your receiver supports 4K. So this one has 8K UHD, so it will do 4K, because if it'll do 8K, hey, it'll do 4K also. But what 8K means is that you're not necessarily going to do 8K, but if it says 8K, it's going to support HDMI 2.1, which is going to get you the 4K at 120 frames per second and also 1080p at 120 frames per second. Basically, it's going to support high frame rate 4K if it supports 8K. Basically, that's saying that it supports the 48 gigabit per second. Now, maybe you just need 4K for movies. Maybe you don't plan to play games. Then you don't need that extra 48 gigabits. 4K at a lower bit rate is going to be just fine for you. But if you do want to play games, whether it's through a PlayStation 5 or Xbox or... Xbox was it was it now Xbox one Xbox reality Xbox I don't know but if you want to play games at higher frame rates at 4k beyond 60 frames per second then you want to make sure that it has the HDMI 2.1 that supports the 120 frames per second and if you get that you're also going to want it says 8k ready but really that means that this is a so this is, it says 8K ready, but really what that, they want to put 8K on there because people say, oh, 8K, oh, bigger. But also what you're really concerned about these days, because, I mean, honestly, who has an 8K display unless you have a uh, very, very expensive TV? But what you're looking at is the 4K 120. So you're going to need a certified HDMI cable that will do 48 gigabits per second. And since I'm going to a projector, I also got, this is an optical HDMI cable. These aren't certified, but I have heard on ABS forum that these do work. Speaking of HDMI 2.1 and 4K120, some people might notice this particular receiver, the earlier models, didn't. there is a glitch. Some sort of glitch where if you had the Xbox S or PS5 or a 3080 graphics card, it wouldn't support the high frame rate. This one has the fix. Basically, if you're getting a Denon receiver specifically, as long as the serial number ends in 70,000 or greater, it contains the newer chip that does not have that bug. If you get one of these and the serial number is less than 70,000, then they have an external converter that you can use. But this one's serial number is actually above 80,000, so this one should have that fix in it. And we'll find out once I get my new projector. All right, now beyond technology, there are certain connections and inputs and outputs that you're going to be concerned about depending on what you want to do and how far you want to go with your theater. So let's get this out of the box real quick. All right, one other thing you want to look for is Odyssey. You don't need that. Uh, you can do all the setup and calibration yourself, but Odyssey does it for you so that you don't have to set your speaker distances and sizes and all that stuff. It'll do it for you, and Odyssey does a pretty good job. All right, so now we get to the portion of the AVR that I really like, which is the back side of the AVR. There is a pretty front end, but uh, nerds like me, I like the back side because that tells me a lot more about what I'm getting. But things that you're going to look for 
in an audio video receiver. This particular one is a 9.2, really it's 9.1, they call it 0.2 because there's two subwoofer outputs, but this is a 9.2 channel audio video receiver. What that means is it will have nine amplified channels of output that will feed the speakers around your theater. Now, a lot of less expensive AVRs, things that most people are going to get because, I mean, this is really an advanced one for certain specific needs, but less expensive ones are going to be like your 5.1 channel, your 7.1, and more. So what those channels are, the first five channels in like a 5.1 receiver is your left and right speakers, your center speaker, and your left and right surround speakers. And a 7.1 receiver, the extra two channels that you get is your surround back speakers. And this receiver, it's 9.2, so the extra two channels there is two height speakers, which would be meant to be installed in the ceiling. Now, if you don't plan to have speakers in your ceiling, you can also use the extra two channels in a 9.1 to have your front height wide speakers, which is some speakers that aren't hard coded onto an audio track, but it's something that audio processing does to widen the sound stage or something like that. Now one thing this receiver does have is it actually has 11 channels of processing. Now most AVRs are only going to have as many channels of processing as they have amplified channels, but this receiver has something a little bit extra, which is this section here, which are pre-outs. What pre-outs are are pre-amplified outputs. Most people are never going to use pre-outs, and so you don't need an AVR that has pre-outs. But if you have bigger speakers, or maybe you have more speakers than the uh, receiver can handle, like this one has nine, maybe you have four ceiling speakers for uh, an Atmos sound setup, well, you would need an 11.1 receiver. Or you would need a receiver like this that has nine amplified channels of output, but 11 channels of processing. What that means is this can decode an Atmos soundtrack and can process up to 11 channels of audio. It's only going to amplify nine of them. Well, what do you do with the extra two? What you do is you send those using one of these pre-outs here to an external dedicated amplifier. This is something that I plan to do in the future since I have some big front tower speakers, is I'm going to use the front left and right pre-outs to go to a dedicated amplifier. I might even have the center channel go to a three channel dedicated amplifier. That would free up two channels so that I can use the rest of these channels for surround left and right, the surround rear speakers, and for ceiling speakers for a really immersive Atmos setup. Another reason you might want to use pre-outs even if it has the same channels of processing as it does speaker outputs, maybe you have huge speakers up front that need a lot of power. Maybe you have a huge room and you're trying to fill it with sound. Well, if you have a big room or big speakers and you need a lot of output because either you like it loud or the room is so large that you just need to have the speakers louder in order to fill the room with sound, then you're possibly going to need more amplification than an AVR can provide. This one has nine channels of output and each of those channels can output up to 105 watts. I'm not sure if this if that spec is all channels driven or usually it's less than all channels, maybe two channels can do 105 watts. But maybe 105 watts isn't enough to get your speakers loud enough for your application needs. Well, that's where you would get an AVR that has pre-outs so that you can use some of these for like maybe your surround speakers don't really need to get that loud, but you're mainly concerned about your front speakers. You can send those to a dedicated amplifier that can put out like 200, 400 watts or even more of power, depending on the power handling capabilities of your front speakers. So pre-outs are something that are important for some people in specific applications. Most people just running it off the receivers uh, provided amplifiers are going to be just fine. Now the next section on this is your HDMI section. And this can be important if you want to do high frame rate gaming. Now this receiver only has one input here that will do your 8K really what I'm doing it for is 4K, 120 frames per second. 
there's only one input that will do 4K at 120 frames per second. All the rest of these inputs will do 4K, but only at up to 60 frames per second. So if you have a, a 30 series graphics card, a 3080, 3090, or you have a PlayStation 5, an Xbox S, or something even later than that, if you're looking at this uh, beyond 2022, that is something that's possibly going to be a concern to you is that this only has one input that will handle that high bandwidth 48 gigabit per second signal that's required to do 4K at 120 hertz. Now you can possibly get some sort of external combiner or splitter. There's usually some sort of solution out there, but that's something to be aware of. For me, I just have a home theater PC. I don't do uh, console gaming much unless it's Nintendo because I'm a Nintendo fanboy. So I'm just going to have my home theater computer hooked up to this, and I do gaming on my home theater PC. I have a 3080 Ti, so I'm going to be using this input here for my high frame rate gaming once I get my new projector. Now another thing you'll notice is this receiver has component inputs and it has a component output. For some reason on this, they have dropped the analog up conversion on older, not too much older, but receivers, maybe a few years old, like my older receiver, it would do an up conversion from the analog to the HDMI output. So if I had an analog video input or analog component input, it would up convert that to HDMI and send it out. This one says that it won't do that. So only the HDMI's are going to go to the HDMI out, and the analog inputs, they're going to have to go to an analog output. Now, most people aren't going to be concerned with that. Uh, for example, with the component inputs, very few people are going to have something that has a component output to it. I do. I have a Nintendo Wii that has a component output dongle with it, uh, so that won't work with this. But you can get external component to HDMI converters so that you can do that and put it in. It's an extra box, but it's just... One of those things has been dropped because very few people need that. This one also has these yellow video inputs. Let me just say, if you are if you have a Blu-ray player, and I've seen this, if you have a Blu-ray player and you're using the red, white, and yellow cable to hook it up to your AVR, you're wrong. And I've seen that done. And I, People get a Blu-ray player, They'll get a high definition TV and they'll hook it up using the red, white, and yellow cable. That if you're if you're running that kind of a setup, you're not getting high definition. You're getting standard definition because you can't pass a high definition signal through it, it just won't let you. You require it requires high definition compact. It requires HDMI. Alright. If you have a Blu-ray player, you need to hook it up to your AVR with an HDMI cable. Don't use the red, white, yellow cable. That's not high definition. If you don't have an HDMI cable, because for some reason, older Blu-ray players, they were sold with a red, white, yellow cable in the box for some stupid reason. And people think, oh yeah, it came with it, so it must be right. No, it's not right. If you have a Blu-ray player, if you have a UHD player, you need to get an HDMI cable and plug it into one of these HDMI inputs if you want to get high definition. You're not going to get high definition with these inputs. Other things to look at on the back here. Uh, it has these guys, which hooks up to Wi-Fi antennas, so this can be Wi-Fi enabled. I'm not sure if this actually has media player capabilities to it. I'll have to check that out. But this can be hooked up to a network to play... Uh, audio from like a media server and it has a hardwired network connection so you can hook it up to your network through a hardwire if you're someone like me who wants to try to minimize the wi-fi footprint because it, well it's just more reliable if it's wired it has ir remote inputs uh, because if you if you're in a situation where you have this maybe in a audio video cabinet in the back of a theater or even Outside the theater, you can get external IR receivers that can plug into this so that your remote just works more reliably, which is always nice when you can use your remote without having to point it at some weird location. It has 12 volt trigger to control other things. So that's what the front of this looks like. Some AVRs may run a little hot, and some have had issues. Like I had an old Onkyo AVR 
where eventually it, it was a known issue with a lot. The HDMI board went out and it got less reliable. This is known to run hot. So if you are concerned with heat or especially if it's going to be in a cabinet where maybe it doesn't have good as good a ventilation as it should, what you can do is get one of these things. And I actually have it back there, but basically what this is, this is a fan unit that sits on top of this. And basically it just draw helps draw air through and exhaust it out. They make three different versions of this. One with fans going out the top, one with fans going out the front, one with fans going out the back. So depending on your situation. But I'll be using that to try to keep this a bit cooler and try to maximize the life of this as long as possible. Because cooler components are generally going to last longer because... If you have these extreme heat cooling cycles, eventually it's just going to stress the connectors in there and you might have failures five, six, seven years down the road. But just keeping it cooler is going to hopefully maximize that lifespan so that you don't have to spend a lot of money on another AVR very soon. Now, of course, if your AVR only has five channels of output, maybe you're not playing it very loud. There's other things you can do. But if you need high output, then you might want to consider some ventilation that to help move air through. Oh, yeah, some of the other certifications. Okay. One thing I didn't talk about that is that this one has IMAX Enhanced on it. What is IMAX Enhanced? It turns your theater into an IMAX one. Basically, IMAX Enhanced is kind of like THX, which is... Basically, it's not necessarily a technology, it's a certification of something. It's a certification that this meets certain design criteria to be able to reproduce sound and video as it was intended by the directors. Now, IMAX Enhanced also says in their literature that it will take a signal from a movie that is IMAX Enhanced. It has extra encoding in the stream to give a bit of extra data and give you supposedly the best picture and sound quality available. But I wouldn't sweat not having this. If you don't have IMAX enhanced, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to watch the 4K UHD version event of Avengers or something like that if it says it's IMAX enhanced. It's just that it's not going through that extra step to make sure that you have the best possible sound. But Really, things like this, it's just a certification to let you know that, yes, this will do all the high-end stuff and, and all that fun stuff. It'll play at the right levels, and it'll play the right audio formats and, and all that fun stuff. You can go to the IMAX Enhanced website and read all their vague literature to maybe learn a little bit more or not about that. So I think that about covers it. When you're looking for an AVR, you're concerned with how many channels of amplification you need. If it's 5.1, 7.1, 9.1. Again, this is a 0.2 just because it has two subwoofer outputs on it. But really, you can have just one subwoofer output. And you can run as many subwoofers you want off of one output. It's only a mono output. Uh, there's two because maybe there's a phase thing going on, but uh, generally you need one, and depending on your setup, you'll use your subwoofer amplifiers to, to take care of that. People said I say subwoofer really weird. I don't know why. But anyhow, you're concerned with how many channels of amplified output it has. Uh, if you want to run external amplifiers because you have big speakers or a big room, you're concerned with whether or not the AVR has preamplified outputs. You're concerned with how many HDMI inputs they have. If it supports HDMI 2.1, which is your 4K 120 video format for high frame rate gaming, and you're concerned with how many outputs it has, uh, this one has three outputs on the back. That way you can feed a projector and maybe a couple other TVs in a different room or a monitor for maintenance. And you're concerned with how many watts it can put out through the amplified outputs, depending on your speakers and what your power needs are. You don't need to run speakers at their full rated power, but uh, the more power that it has available, the more you can be assured that you can listen loudly, you can listen to a movie turned up really loud and still be able to get a really good experience without anything running out of juice. And if you are concerned with your speakers running out, out of juice, then get one that has preamplified outputs and feed that into a dedicated amplifier. And then there's just all your sound formats. If you want to have the speakers in your ceiling for the Dolby Atmos experience, you want to make sure your receiver is Dolby Atmos capable. 
most of them are but if you're doing dolby atmos that means you're going to need more channels of sound to support the extra speakers but pretty much all avrs are going to do your dolby 2 hd dts es master audio dts it's going to do all the advanced formats as long as you're using an hdmi input if you're one of those people that are still using the red white yellow outputs from a dvd player and feeding it into a avr uh come to the 20th century uh you're like 22 years too late go to amazon.com buy an hdmi cable they're not that expensive use an hdmi cable to feed all your equipment because if you're not using the hdmi cable you're not getting high definition video so that about does it for this video there are a lot more finer points a lot more details i could go into but i don't want to do like a three hour long video talking about every single little nuance um but if you have specific questions, you can ask them in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, my channel recently got super thanks, so you can uh, send me one of those if this really helped you out. Uh, or at the very least, like, subscribe. There's other videos here that I have on my channel that you uh, might find helpful. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'm going to go and hook this up now.